Hello and welcome to Regional Arts Australia's Conversation Series. My name is Mary Jane Warfield. I'm the Regional Arts Fund Manager for Regional Arts Australia. I'm joining you today from Avantua Alice Springs and I'm on Aranda Country. Regional Arts Australia acknowledges the traditional custodians of land throughout Australia and we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Today, we'd also like to acknowledge the devastating floods in regional New South Wales or across New South Wales. Our thoughts are with our colleagues and friends and all the communities, animals and environments that have been affected. At the end of this conversation, we will show a slide that links to information and places that you can donate um, some options through our partnership with Australian Communities Foundation. So today's session is the fifth of our Artland seri conversation series, Adapting Culture in Regional New South Wales. We'll be hearing from Alex Wisser from Candos in New South Wales. Now, all of the Artlands programming is supported by the Australian Government's Regional Arts Fund. So as usual, firstly, I'll do a little housekeeping. Uh, today's session will be Auslan interpreted. You can see Shavoy on your screen. Um, it, closed captioning is also available. So if you wish to enlarge the view of the Auslan interpreter, you can scroll over their video and pin that video and that will make that larger uh, for you on the screen. Um, the Aus there are two Auslan interpreters. So we have Shavoy, who's on the screen at the moment, and David. They will interpret for about 15 minutes each and then they'll swap over. So you'll need to pin each video if you're operating that and you'd like to see them larger. Now, down the bottom of your screen, I'm sure you're all aware of how Zoom works, um, but I'll just go over how we'd like you to interact with this webinar. In the chat icon, um, please say hello, let us know what country you're Zooming in from. And um, we've got about 90 people registered today, so there'll be quite a few of you there. So please yeah, reach out, say hi, and let us know that you're here. And then there's a Q&A icon as well on the bottom of your screen. That's for questions for Alex and myself. Um, so please use the chat to say hello and the Q&A just for questions that you'd like us to answer during the session. And um, we welcome your questions. So, and you'll be able to see other people's questions, I believe. And I think you can upvote those. So there's a little, um, like a thumb mark where you can click on that and that will make that question come to the top of the, of the pile of questions. So we'll have some time at the end to explore the questions. We might not get to them all, um, but I'll try and incorporate questions into today's conversation. So today's topic is adapting culture in regional New South Wales. And it's a case study of one artist's experiences with community in regional New South Wales. So Regional Arts Fellowship recipient, Alex Wisser is an artist based in Candles, New South Wales. Alex is a founding member of the Candles School of Cultural Adaptation, a socially engaged artist cooperative working in regional New South Wales. He is also the creative director of Cementa, which is an arts organisation and festival committed to cultivating contemporary art culture specific to its regional context, bridging the perceived divide between urban and regional art. Now, usually at this time, I would hand over to a facilitator, but today that's me. So I'm lucky enough to be today's facilitator and be able to talk with Alex. I'll be asking Alex about the role art plays in reinforcing the cohesion of a community, the importance of clear communication and the journey his work has taken across the projects over the past eight years of working and living in Candos. So I'll invite Alex to the screen now. Um, and while we're on, hi, Alex. Hello. Um, so whilst we're in conversation, Alex is going to share a slideshow. We're very lucky because he's a photographer and the images are, are really lovely. Um, so he's prepared this slideshow and he'll share that from his screen now. Uh, these images will run whilst we talk. So they'll show, you'll see each image for about 10 seconds and then it will go to the next image. The images won't necessarily relate to exactly what we're talking about at the time, but Alex has provided a caption of each image so you'll be able to locate um, the context of that in the overall topic. So, um, yeah, Alex, when you're ready to share screen, if you're able to do that, is yep. that working for you? Yeah, before I do that, I'd, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm on uh, Wiradjuri land, um, the Davy people, and to um, pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, Thank you.
All right, there we go. Great. Okay, so um, for context, because we've got a national audience today, Alex, can you locate us? Where is Candos? What else is around? What's the population like? Can you give us some context of that? Yeah, uh, so Candos is a um, it's a, uh, a post-industrial town, we're calling it. It was a, a cement town, and it was the um, Candos Cement Works, which is the largest cement works in the Southern Hemisphere for... Um, uh, basically for m most of the 20th century. Um, it was founded for the works. It's uh, one of the very few 20th century towns in Australia. It was, um, uh, uh, it was yeah, so it's, it's got, it's laid out on a grid, wide streets, um, and, uh, um, and it was put up to house the uh, workforce uh, of, the, of the works. Um, it is, uh, and so we're in the Midwest of, uh, uh, of um, New South Wales, about three and a half hours from Sydney. Uh, Mudgee is uh, the main town, it was about 40 minutes. We're an hour from Bathurst, we're an hour from Lithgow. Um, yeah, we were about, about 1,500 people. It's, uh, so it was 2012 that the, that the works closed down and the local mine, this is going very fast. I, I, not sure how to change that anyways um and uh yeah so we'll um yeah so I, I i think that's the general gist of it was there anything i missed in terms of yeah no great that's good that gives us a context so you're mid new south wales i can get that from my experience of being to those other towns just to sense where you are so the population is just 1500 people did you say yeah yeah 1500 between candos and ralston which is a, a little 19th century town uh, not that far, basically seven kilometers down the down the road. So you have this 20th century and this 19th. It was a working class and a farming town. So there were all sorts of dynamics between the two towns uh, mm. over there. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of your journey, where were you before Candos and why why there? Um, so I, I was basically in 2012. I was list, uh, living in Lithgow and. Um, uh, not Lithgow. I was living in uh, St. Peter's. I, I'm, I'm really bothered by the fact that my slideshow is going so Yeah, fast. if you'd like to pause, we can... Do you mind? I, I'm yeah, so no, smart. that's fine. That's I'm not okay. that good at PowerPoint. I will give it a go. Um, yeah. Uh, transitions. I just learned this. I think, yeah, this is what's happening here. So, okay. Oh, yeah, you've got a two-second transition. Yeah, that was a two-second. Okay. Yeah, and you wanted that. 10. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. that'll be more comfortable and people yeah. can really see the image. Yeah. I'm just gonna start again so we can absolutely no problem. All right. Well, hopefully it doesn't go too slow this time. Um so uh yeah, so I, I was living in St. Peter with my partner. Oh wait, has that has that was that a bit more comfortable? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I was living with my partner in, in Petersham. We belong to the um uh, basically, the Ari, the artist-run initiative scene in in uh, in that um, in Sydney, and had been for about four years. We were running our own art space and artist studios uh, called Index, and we came up to Candos for a residency um, at Candos Projects, which was a, an artist-run uh, an artist residency run by Anne Finnegan, who's an arts writer and a uh, um, uh, an academic. And um, it was during that residency that we, uh, the three of us actually, um, cooked up the idea of, uh, of Cementa Festival. Yeah. So, so yeah, so, and, and that sort of set off a chain reaction that completely changed my life. Um, we, we basically, that was so mid 2012, uh, the idea behind the festival was, it really came from a conversation where we were talking about the cement works having closed and what that would mean for the town. And then somebody suggested, oh, wouldn't that be an amazing place to have a festival? And we thought we would do it in the, in the, in the, in the works. Um, didn't happen because basically the OH&S around, around having an art festival in a, um, a, you know, a disused industrial site is, um, is pretty, um, yeah, it's pretty onerous and, and, and Cement Australia wasn't gonna have it. But the town came to the table. Um, they, they were, the town was very aware of, of the economic transition and the idea of having a festival um, appealed, uh, not to all of them, um, but to certainly to the, I would say the town leadership. So business folk, the folk who, who run, you know, the, the organizations. And they came in and they encouraged us and um, helped us to find the venues for the first 
first uh, first festival. Um, yeah, correct. Yeah. So we, we basically, we launched that first festival um, in February of 2013, four days, 40 artists. Um, and it was, it, it, it was hugely successful. It was very rocky. Like we didn't know what we were doing. Um, we didn't, you know, I was not a socially engaged or community engaged artist. So, and none of us were, and we sort of just had to roll with it, which I think was, you know, actually part of what made that such an exciting festival. It is, and I don't think I'll ever beat it. Like it's my favorite festival because it was the scariest. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we learned, we learned a lot. And, and out of that, like basically we moved. So my part, uh, Georgie and I, my partner, Georgie and Paula, um, we moved up uh, just prior to the festival to set it up thinking we would, you know, wash back to the city at the end of it. And, um, and we never left. We just stayed yeah. after that. And I can relate to that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I came to Alice Springs for a 12 week contract nearly eight years ago. I really, yeah. I think regions draw you in. I just wanted to bring you back to why, why a festival? So when you, when you were there on your residency and you had this idea for a festival, why was it that you wanted to do a festival? What motivated you to have that kind of activity with the, with the community? Well, I mean, to be perfectly honest, it wasn't, you know, like that, the, the emphasis, we were far more self-involved at that point than, okay. than, yeah. than that. we weren't, we were just wanted, we, our community was the arts community in Sydney. And it's, this yes. is the grassroots community, the artists making work, showing in, in the artist spaces that we, we circulated in. And we thought this would be an amazing place to have a, you know, a big party that celebrated what we did. And then from that moment, we had to begin to think about, well, what was that gonna mean for the people in the town? And, 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 and it started to set up the, the, you know, the, the, the paradigm uh, about, well, yeah, how, how do we do this in a way that, that it, we're not just throwing a party in someone else's house? How do we, yeah. invi how do we invite them to the, to the party? How do we do this? And, and it started a whole series of thinking, you know, that, that really could only unfold as the festival unfolded. And as we learned, as we made mistakes, as, mm. you know, as things went wrong and, 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 and we suddenly discovered we weren't doing things, you know, in a way that, that, that made the community very happy. Um, and, and from that, so through that process, you know, it, that's, that's ingrained in the festival now, to my, to my mind, was this original desire, you know, first was the original desire was to, to, to have an art show. And then, and then really what became to dominate it was this idea that how do you have an art show um, uh, in a town whose culture is different from, from that art culture that you're exhibiting and how do you make it inclusive and how, how do you involve people? And, and, that, and that has been the journey you know, through Cementa and, and mm. beyond into KSEA as well. Yeah, for sure. So um, in terms of activities and events, how, do, how has that changed since the first year? What kind of program did you create at the start and how has that shifted over the years in terms of your collaboration with community? Yeah, well, I, I would say that, you know, the first one was very, the first one because it was, um, it was so impromptu and because, you know, one of the things that I thought was really amazing about that first one was all of the artists were incredibly sensitive to, well, what did, what did the townspeople think of us? Like there, a lot of works were very self-reflective. There was a lot of works that were uh, self-deprecating. Um, there were works that were critical of the festival um, and, and the potentials that we, you know, these optimistic potentials we were, we were throwing around. Um, and, you know, basically attempting to, to and what I, what I thought that was, was basically the artists were, um, you know, they were nervous and they, they knew they were presenting to an audience that, um, you know, was not the uh, the standard or the, uh, the the normal audience for contemporary art, and I think that both you know scared them and excited them, and then made them you know think very hard about well, yeah, what what are they going to think of us? And so we had artists making you know we had a, a flying saucer, we had um, artists making work uh, around the the closure of, of the cement works, um, uh, and, and and but it was very very impromptu. Um, but I, I thought really, really um, very vital because it was, it, everything was so immediate um, because there was, a, there was so much at stake for, for the artists involved for us and I, I suppose for the town as well. Um, yeah. And so with the later festivals, we get, you get more time, things are more organized, 
we are, you know, slowly learning how to do this and it becomes, uh, you know, it becomes a little bit slower. And that has allowed us, the one advantage that that is allows us to do works that are um, a little bit more time intensive. Um, those are difficult to do because just for budget, but we, we've been able to do uh, across the festivals, a number of works that I'm very proud of that, you know, that are, are you know, are engaging on, on a deeper level with the commuter, community and involving them. Um, and I would say those were the two, you know, the two main, the main uh, sort of developments. I mean, at the moment, we're kind of uh, trying to, uh, um, to better uh, uh, regulate, for lack of a better word, our curatorial frame. So mm -hmm. we ask artists to um, come up, do the residency, and then make work about the regional context. So work- Okay, to, yeah. go back a step. What's, can you tell us about the residency? So, so yeah, all of the all of the festival artists are, are asked to make, to do a residency in Candos. Oh, great! Uh, okay, yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Oh yeah. So the, so that's and the work built into to, the programming. Yeah. Yeah. And the work has to be made um, in in uh, in relationship to this. And and this was this was basically to avoid that that sort of um, uh, the parachute art uh, model of of just yeah. you know, it, it, and really we wanted to avoid using the town as an exhibition venue. You know, mm -hmm. like, and which was really on its end. So we we thought, well, we, we, why don't we make the art uh, about you know the town, about the context, um, and this would pr potentially help us to uh, you know to communicate to uh, an audience that isn't familiar with contemporary art um, by making the subject matter something that they are familiar with, and and which you know basically will allow somebody to disagree with us because. We are not the experts on Candos. We, in fact, you know, the artists that come up are really the amateurs of Candos. So the the people out here actually have a much better understanding of what of what the artists might be talking about, and and that creates a you know a, a sense of where, you know, they well they have somewhere to stand uh, when they approach it, and it's it, and and trying to render it a little bit less intimidating in that way, the way that a, a white wall gallery will be intimidating and foreboding to to people who aren't you know who aren't um, Com uh, comfortable with that, that culture. Yeah, for sure. So if you could go back to the very first year and tell the team and yourself anything, what do you think you'd say? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I don't tend to have too many regrets. That's <laughs> so, great. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, like, because the, the mistakes, I mean, the, one of the things we learned, I learned out of 19, which, you know, because it had a little, there was, you know, there was, we were, it was the bushfires were on, everybody was tense. We closed the swimming pool for a, a big event without realizing that was going to cause a huge rupture in the, um, you know, with the community. And so we had a bit of the tension from the first festival and a bit of that excitement, which kind of um, re reminded me of it. And I, and I was suddenly like, oh yeah, this is, this is what it feels like to make art um, that's, that's taking a risk that, you know, it's scary, it should be scary if you're taking yeah. a risk. And, and I think that if, from that first festival, especially because it was, you know, it was traumatic like the, it was hard it was we had no, no idea what we were doing and um and we did we angered the town you know at, at one point and um uh and things were said and, and have those relationships been healed alex the relationships in town do you think most of those have i think for the most part yes. Yeah. i mean i think for yeah. yes for the most part yes and and this was a point that georgina made um very early on which you know she said that the, the trouble we had was actually not we shouldn't look at it as a bad thing you know that that is actually was a moment in which the the conflict that was inherent in what we were doing could be brought to the surface and that the townsfolk could speak to us and say no this is our town and claim yeah. it. and then from there depending on how we responded to that a relationship could be could be founded as opposed to doing something that was maybe a little bit more you know um uh, uh cotton balled you know uh, with with a lot of you know uh protocols in place that would you know keep that conflict suppressed and not allow it to 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 come to the surface at all so i think you know like allowing allowing the, you know the 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 things that scare us and the things that that challenge us to come to the surface um, I think that's an important part of 
uh, of what we're doing. And it's an important part of art if you, if you get down to it. Like, you know, it, art should be kind of, it should be making, if, if an artist is meant to be challenging something, well, the artist should, should be challenging themselves as well. And, um, and it should be, it, you know, it should be that fraught, um, that relationship um, to make it meaningful. Mm, great. So I wanna move now to talking about the School of Cultural Adaptation. Yep. Um, can you tell us how that how that relates to the Cementa Festival and, and how that was formed? So the uh, the Kanda School of Cultural Adaptation was a basically in the first festival uh, the artist Ian Millis, who's um, I don't uh, anyone know who, uh, if everyone knows who he is, but Ian Millis is a, a one of the very first um, uh, conceptual artists in Australia. Um, he was uh, the youngest member of the. Uh, very famous uh, um, gallery, uh, which is I'm just blanking. Someone will will put it in the in the chat um, from from the 70s. Uh, and it, it's the gallery that the field was shown at, right? The really big famous show. And he was this young uh, painter, fr uh, basically from Blackman's Flat, so from literally a half an hour away from here. Mm -hmm. um, near Wallarawang is a, a coal mining family and he had gotten involved in the arts and then ran straight through to conceptual art and then um, and then and then and then into uh, socially engaged art and he made we found him he was he was living in Wallarawang um, and and we knocked on his door and asked him if he wanted to be a part of our festival and he looked at us like we were crazy yeah and eventually he invited us in for a cup of tea and we I don't know how we did it but we convinced him to do something he made a poster um, which was called Welcome to Canada, so which was like a tourism poster, and it had all of these amazing projects on it. Um, there was a, a, a the, the largest solar farm in, in uh, the Southern Hemisphere, the, the cement works, the, um, the tower in the cement works was converted into a dive school, a diving, scuba diving school. There was a, a university, there was a, a fleet of, of, of free to use plywood bicycles all of these wonderful projects that had been achieved in, in Candos and all of which were complete fictions. Yeah. And um, we, we actually got complaints to council uh, for that one, um, which we, we were all very proud of. And, um, and, and on it was this university with its uh, school, it was, uh, there was a school of cultural adaptation. And in, I think in 2017, in preparation for that festival, the artist Gilbert Grace uh, approached me with the idea. He wanted to make one of the things from that poster happen at the festival. And, yeah, right. Yeah, and so that little, that little kind of connection um, sort of sparked and, and we, uh, we got a, a few more artists involved and, uh, and then it was, it was kind of sort of rolled out that, that we were gonna to attempt to, to make this school of cultural adaptation, which is, you know, is absolutely not a school in the traditional sense. It's, um, it's a basically a, a, a socially engaged artist cooperative. Um, and, it, uh, and, and, and we sort of reached in this very loose sort of structure that um, any of the work that we did that, that fits within its remit, basically the, 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 that fits within the, the understanding of art making that, that KSEA holds, we would, we would then call a KSEA project. Um, and so, and from, and from that, because we had artists like Lucas Eileen and, and Ian Millis, who were already working with farming communities uh, mm -hmm. around regenerative farming, um, we, we went in that direction. And because we, it, it just made perfect sense. And we, we, we it, you know, the, the fact is that natural sequence farming was invented an hour north of us in the Bailong Valley. Amazing, and, yeah. yeah, right. So the history of it is from that region. Yeah, it comes yeah. from that. Yeah, and in fact, the first farmer I ever talked to about KSEA was uh, Stuart Andrews, who's the son of Peter Andrews, who invented it. And, Amazing. Yeah, and yeah. Did, yeah, and so just so you know, like the the idea behind KSEA, which is the Kando School of Cultural Adaptation, it's the idea that all art is is basically the adaptation of culture. It's about how we change culture to meet the, cha the changing social conditions or material conditions that we live in. Um, and, and how we adapt, and culture changes all the time, but how we adapt those changes or adapt to them, that's how we, that's how, uh, that's what art has the capacity to do. And mm. 
are you know and, and there's a certain I, I guess frustration as well that 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 all of that change is is um, you know it's uh, uh, basically uh, isolated within the art world and it you know and there's this constant overturning of uh, of of cultural change that doesn't really find a whole lot of application outside of the art world and so the idea of the school is actually to engage in projects that acknowledge that culture happens everywhere and that anyone who changes culture is therefore mm. an artist and and it and, and basically that inversion uh of um you know that inversion of, of priority uh uh basically puts the creative uh um impulse uh into the community and the artist comes in to basically contribute to uh, you know to to basically help out where they can and yeah and, and the fact is is that we've you know over over the years over the last 200 years of, of art history we've developed you know a lot of pretty amazing tools for changing culture for challenging perceptions for for creating reflections for um for for uh for for making communication you know and mm. um and so the question became you know why do we have to do this in in galleries only in galleries why cannot why can't we apply these two tools to the to the world and to and to basically to to po points at which either communities or people are attempting to change the culture around them. And this is where we get involved with the um, regenerative farming movement because that's exactly what they're doing. And they're facing the same sort of challenges that artists feel uh, and face when they attempt to, to change culture you know, within, within our own milieu. Yeah, Could, Alex, can you talk a bit more about um, maybe a specific project um, that links regenerative, far regenerative farming with the arts and give our audience a bit of an idea of what, how that school of cultural adaptation, what that output looks like. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, every, every, we've basically done three major projects and mm -hmm. every project is completely different and every project is, is a learning um it's a learning experience so for me to, like i'm just trying to think which one would would be the best one to do the the artist the farmer and the scientist um is was a was a two-year project we did uh we engaged eight artists with far farmers scientists um uh traditional owners um mostly around the bingra area but uh there was there a few engagements around here as well um around uh, natural sequence farming and uh, and the movement towards basically reconsidering the land and and the, and the way we treat and uh, um, uh, and use the land, but it was very much in support of um, uh, a group of uh, people up in Bingara uh, who run a facility called the um, uh, the Living Classroom. So they actually had were, had been able to get. Uh, a, a bit of land from the council, and they they've actually put a, this classroom uh, on, onto this land, and they and they and they've got permaculture gardens, and they've got all sorts of different demonstrations. Uh, they've got uh, carbon sequestration um, uh, paddocks, and um, uh, I, I can't remember, but they they do a whole lot of, of those sort of things. So our idea was that we would come on, and we would um, we would uh, help to um, to to work with them to uh to to make the transition and and so you know for instance within their own com community there you know there's a, a certain conservative element of the uh you know the um standard kind of uh farmers who, yeah. who, look, who look down on what they're doing as a bit of wackadoodle and yeah. and technical and, term <laughs> yeah, yeah it's it it definitely a, a technical term and um and so uh, you know, so it's not it's not all that easy. That basically trying to to communicate uh, and and to find the the movement itself since we began that project is actually quite taken off, and it's amazing to see it do that. So we kind of we kind of engaged with it at a at a very key moment, like at a moment, and that, that that's not on us. Mm. Like that's actually the movement. That's 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 farmers all over the country. It was the drought which drove people to reconsider how they were farming and how they might be able to. Uh, Im, you know, Im, improve the way that they were treating the land so that the, you know, the land might actually give them better yields. Um, and, um, and yeah, so we, we, we engaged with the, those farmers for the eight years. Um, and that- Sorry, say that again. You've engaged with them over years. the whole eight years? 
two years, sorry. Oh, eight, two years, yeah. Eight, eight artists in two, over two years. Yeah, gotcha, yeah. Uh, yes, I've got a little bit confusing. Um, and so we had like Bruce Pascoe uh, engaged with Carla Dickens. They did this uh, beautiful video with local uh, Aboriginal kids. Um, we had uh, Laura Fisher and Jonah Belitho uh, worked with uh, Glenn Morrison, who's a, uh, uh, an organic farmer, and they did a, an entire work around humus, which is a kind of, if I pronounce that correct, uh, it, it's a living soil that um, yeah. is, it's basically very little understood. It's so complex, it's very little understood. And it's and because it's, it's, it's not really, you know, it's not really considered. Uh, um, uh, uh, and so it's, it's often, you know, farmers will, it, it can be damaged very easily. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a form of soil that, that is very rich. Uh, in, in microbial life and 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 so contributes to the to the nutrient regeneration of the, the cycles of the of the soil. Um, we we worked with uh, um, who else did we work with? Um, uh, well, there was a really interesting um, there was a really re interesting engagement between uh, a um, and I, I'm sorry because I'm going to forget the names. Uh, but it was a, a, a solar um, scientist uh, and, and, uh, and an artist, and uh, they engaged with um, a small farm outside of Hartley uh, called Epicurean Harvest. And, um, and this, was a, this was one of these moments where I kind of learned what it was that was possible. Like what, what can an artist, what can an artist bring to these contexts and, and to these, you know, struggles? What, 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 you know, actual value can we give to them? Mm. And, um, and so th those, the, that project um, ended up with a, um, a farm visit uh, in which we in invited a, an audience from the city and we got about 40 or 50 people uh, to come up and we walked on the land uh, with these farmers and talked to them about what they were doing. And, um, and so for, this is just one of the little sort of vignettes that, uh, that, that sort of occurred was that, um, you know, they talked about how hard it was to do what they were doing. And they'd come mm. up and they'd come up very idealistically. They were young and they'd come up very idealistically to take this bit of land and to use regenerative farming techniques to uh, turn it into a market garden. And, you know, and farming is, it's, you know, under the best of condition, it's, a, it's hard work. It's very yeah. uncertain work. And then they'd come up and, and started to do the work that they were doing and they got hit by the drought. And yeah, and then and the and the thing you know the stories they told, um, and at one point one of the farmers said you know um, that the wonderful thing about about being involved in the project was that you know it, it, it you know you're you're isolated they were isolated on their farm which I think is pretty common yeah. and. Um, and, 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 and through the, the grinding, you know, nonstop work that they had to do in order to keep going, they really lost track of why they were doing it, you know, and that, that sense of the value okay. of what they were doing. And the very fact that 40 people would, tra would travel all the way up from the city to, to, to talk to them and to engage with what they were doing was completely validating and, 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 and renewing for them. And yeah, awesome. and it was it was like a moment. I was like, oh yeah, this is one of the things we can do. Like we can actually bring this. And also on the other side of it is that those are forty people, and I, I think that from our audience, most of the people feel this is that they they live in cities, and and farmers will you know will will you know they'll they'll spark off about you know all these city folks that you know they get their they get their their veggies off the, the supermarket shelves, and they they don't know what it is to 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 farm, and they don't. Um, and, 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 and that's actually something that actually people in the city are at a level aware of and, and being able to actually come out and engage with the land and find out where your food comes from and find out what, what the challenges are and why it is that, you know, that we're not, you know, we're not um, practicing more sustainable methods of farming. You know, what are those economic challenges that are standing in the ways? And instead of simply pointing your finger at farmers and going, you know, oh, you're wrecking the land to actually come out 
and 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 engage with them. And you know, late, um, in a in a later project, for instance, um, we had a, a landed studio which was run by Laura Fisher, and um, and they brought up a bunch of students from Wollongong University to work on the land with these farmers to restore some of the waterways that were uh, you know that were going through their land. So this was just uh, that was just one of the moments where I went, oh mm -hmm. yeah. This is one of the things that art can do, um, and you know, and art can do things like you know, it can offer a community uh, reflection, you know, like, and, yeah. and and it does it in a way that's, you know, you, what you're not doing is taking the argument and putting it in, you know, on a podium and going, okay, let's talk about this honestly. You're doing it in a very indirect way, so that the conflict doesn't immediately break out into a, a punch up. You know, yeah. it, it, you know, it, you're doing it in a way so that the, the very, it was just a really beautiful moment was at the very beginning of that project. Um, the, um, the, the, the fellow who was uh, Rick Hutton, who was one of the fellows from Bingra who was uh, sort of driving from, from their end. He was the, the, he ran the local amateur theater and he insisted that he was going to have an amateur theater play that announced the project to his community. And um, we were, you know, we were a little bit nervous about that because we were like, oh, God, what's that going to be? Is it going to be daddy or, you know, like, ooh. And, um, and we, we so, but you know what, we, we did it. And um, uh, Diego Benedo came up and he, he did a, a foraging adventure and then got together with the local, um, the, the local volunteer ladies. And they cooked up this massive feast, you know, using weeds and, uh, and Glenn Morris's, um, uh, uh, organic beef and through this huge meal, really beautiful. And they put on this play and it was called The Artist, The Farmer, The Scientist Walk Into a Bar, which was the yeah. name of our project. Yeah. And the whole thing, it was, it was literally that, right? And yeah. the whole thing was these three, you know, stereotypical characters um, telling dad jokes the whole time. And <laughs> <laughs> he just got on the internet and 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 we laughed like the whole community laughed and it was uh, and, and it was and he he told me he said like everyone's here like all from all sides of the spectrum everybody yeah. has shown up and and it was so uh like i think it was such a positive thing to do to just do something where you know what let's just start from a place of laughter instead of starting you know with our serious hats on where we're gonna you know we're gonna fight with each other, which we never do. We, we, you know, that's not what we're, we're not about, you know, being oppositional. We actually kind of move to the side. Like art has yeah. the ability of being indirect, you know, that you can, you can, you can talk about something but by talking about something else. And, yeah. um, and I found that time and time again, that's often how that, you know, conversation can help, you know, can, can go forward in a healthy way. For sure. And it's, um, like you were saying at the start, to challenge oneself. I think that attitude flows through to this idea of um, laughing together. So challenging the the um, I guess the preconceived notions of how to how different groups might interact. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's really how I, interesting. I th it's how I think of KSCA as a school. Like I'm not I'm not a teacher. I'm a student. Like it's mm. me. It's and I'm learning. I'm learning so much, which is why I think so amazing about it and this is what artists do when they make work like you know it's why an artist can't make a work that they know what it is before they go into it like if you if you're so you know on top of it an artist is gonna you know they're, they're gonna change change up their game because there's no challenge there's nothing to learn by making an, an artwork you already know how to make it's always it's about you know going in and and dealing with something that you don't know and having that speak back to you and, and defy you and 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 teach you you know that no I, I'm not where you think I am no I'm not gonna you know I'm not I'm not that malleable I will not I yeah. will not move in that direction. Totally, um, I'm aware that we're over halfway, so I think I probably should move on to your fellowship. So. Is that all right with you if we talk yeah, about yeah. the fellowship project? Yeah. So Alex received a fellowship this time last year, um, or a bit later, it started, I guess, in June last year. Can you talk us through um, how that's been for you and what, what kind of things you've been doing in that fellowship? Yeah, yeah, well, I've been, um, so yeah, that fellowship was full of all sorts of, you know, travel and, and meeting many interesting people across Australia. Yeah, um, and of course that was interrupted with COVID. And so was, something, just a shout out to the um, Australian government's regional arts fund, that they were very flexible and we've been very flexible 
um, and understanding, I hope, with being able to be really um, open. So we assessed those fellowships during the first sort of shutdown in March last year, and we looked at the strength of the project ideas, regardless of the planning. You know, regardless of all this, I'll do all this travel. It was like, what's the strength of this idea? And um, so your, the strength of your idea and the concept of your project is what got it uh, funded in a very competitive environment. Sorry, I'll hand back over to you, Alex, to tell no, us no. about what that project yeah, no, involves. It was, it, was, it was very generous and, 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 and really great. And, and I guess, you know, well, it was, um, and like, I, I still have, you know, I still plan to do the traveling and to go out and to, and to meet because some of the people that were I was lined up, it was basically around um, uh, getting around to the regional areas and, and meeting people working in the arts in the regions, but also then meeting with like farming groups or uh, uh, rural uh, associations and talking to them, just presenting them the idea of what, we, what we're doing and, and getting a better understanding of how that's going to play um, and how it is that we might be able to, um, to you know, shift the perception around um, what you know what art is and to to the point of where you know we and this has been something that's developed through the fellowship um, is 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 identifying the idea that uh, you know that pretty much across the board um, uh, art is seen as this thing that 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 exists you know in art galleries and um, and that if it does have this ability to work within the world and to create value within the world, it, there, it therefore has, um, you know, it has a, uh, I, you know, for lack of a better word, a new market, you know, it's got, there's a, there's now like, you know, you can, you can see this. I'm, I'm working with, for instance, uh, as part of my fellowship, Skosha Monkovich from uh, Creative Recovery um, Network, which is a, a, a network, a national network that engages artists with communities that um, have suffered from natural disaster. And, and it's around using the arts as a way of um, helping those, those communities to, to recover from, uh, from those natural disasters. Um, and, and, and so the conversation is really around, well, how do we begin to shift the concept and turn this into, so um, I, I applied to the National Land Care uh, Conference to present and I did not, I did not get across it. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it's very competitive and, and I'm, I, and I, 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 I yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I wasn't surprised when we didn't get up, but they've allowed us to put up a poster. And, and so I'm, I'm actually working with Ian Millis to design that poster and Ian will be designing it and I, I'll be giving him comments basically. And, um, and I, I'm really excited about it. Like it's kind of this weird marketing, it's art as a marketing and one that I don't really have to feel conflicted about because, you know, like we're sitting there thinking, okay, well, who do we want to see this poster? And it's like, well, you know, you, 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 these, everyone else is gonna be looking at posters of tractors or, you know, uh, um, fertilizers or the, all the other things that, that, that are being sold here, we're going to want to target that member in the farming community that, that cares about the community and is thinking about, you know, the, the troubles that they're going, the challenges they're going through, and, and, and is wondering how the heck can we address these challenges. And so even that, that little, you know, that, um, you know, it's this shift of taking the, the way you think in the art world and just, you know, doing it outside. Um, and, uh, and it, it, you know, it, it sort of opens these very, for what are for me, very exciting little kind of um, uh, uh, pathways that you can take. And the, the fellowship itself is actually that. Um, because I'm, so I'm working with Scotia and I'm working with Jen, Jen Ray, a socially engaged artist in, in Melbourne. And we're working to um, devise uh, a research framework for measuring the impacts of socially engaged art. And when I when I wrote that on, into the fellowship, I, I thought, yeah, you know, like Scotia really wanted to do this. She she thinks it's very important, and I do think it was it's important so that you have a you know you have a a, a framework for collecting data and yeah. translating it into something that policy boffins and and government officials um, can understand and 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 will, will would support. And so, like, in order if we want to be able to change the perception of how art you know, is, um, you know, sits in the world, then, then we're going to have to look at the, la the other languages, the languages that other, uh, you know, other segments of, the, of society use. So I, I was doing it, but it wasn't something I was looking forward to. It's not, you know, I, I certainly don't like data. I don't like surveys. I, 
I find oh, all Alex. Stuff. I know. <laughs> I love that stuff. <laughs> you can send them to me. <laughs> well, so okay, but that was me going in. And yeah, then, okay. And then there, there was a moment, there was a moment in the in in the process of okay, well, how you know what, what sort of data do we want to collect? Yeah. Um, and uh, and how do we want to do this? And and I was and, and I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about how actually when when you engage with a community, um, you know, what, everything happens, you know, nothing's in your control. It's it is it's so different. It's so other than what happens in an art world where everything has sort of been, you know, brought to a standstill so that you can think about it. And yeah. and you present these objects that are kind of, you know, they're meant to be eternal or persistent objects. Mm. Um, we can see but, this in the images you're showing like they're so alive. There's so much food and movement and potential for different things to happen that are out of your control. Yeah, yeah, which is, I, I think, yeah, which is one of the things that, and, and so all of that is just, it's firing past you as you go. And you're seeing all sorts of amazing things and you're making, you know, realizations, you're also dealing with a community and a community yeah. is complex, you know, uh, um, uh, and, and um, f fractious object. It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not what, what people who idealize community is. It, you know, they're, they are incredibly valuable uh, um, organisms, but, you know, they're mostly made up in my, in my experience of, of difference. Like there are a whole bunch yeah. of very different people that are working together and trying to overcome those differences in order to do so and doing so um, with more or less success. And yeah, particularly in regional spaces. I mean, my experience is that in a regional space, you've got less people, more isolated. And so you have to get along with people that are different. Yeah. So coming from an, a city art world where there's the arts people that are separate from everybody else. And whereas in a regional community, everybody's an arts person because if there's something on offer everyone will go because there's something on offer yes, yeah, I, yeah yeah that's been my experience of regional living yeah no you're ab absolutely right like it's you know it the you know a regional community is it's it's a it's you know it's a located community it's a it's people are together because they're in the same spot not because they agree with each other or exactly we're able to afford the same neighborhood you know they're they're in there you know just simply because they happen to be there and so that you get these very broad spectrum difference, um, which are, you know, yeah, which, which yeah, which is a really interesting thing, and 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 so understanding that, coming to understand what dynamic is at play within a particular community, and each one is going to be particular. Like it's not, I don't think that you'll ever come up with a rule book where you can, you know, write it and somebody who, who can walk into a community they've never met before and understand what's going on is that, you know, you yeah. actually have to get in and know the people and, 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 you know, and, and they're not going to give up, you know, they're not going to let you know about the, you know, all of the frictions and the, the secret animosities and all of the Yeah, you have to learn that stuff by mistakes, I guess. Yeah. And so, yeah. and so you go in blind. A, a yeah. lot of the times you're blind, you don't know what's happening. And I thought, well, why not, why not take this framework that we're devising in order to speak to government and actually design it first for the artist. So that the artist has okay. a tool set in which you can actually, you know, get a better idea of, 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 of what you're dealing with, of who the community is and who the, where the differences are as well, because you're gonna be talking to that segment of the community that's talking to you. And there's a yeah. whole, gonna be all sorts of different stuff that, you know, all sorts of different bits of the community that, that are not gonna to talk to you. And you have to work that out. And, you know, and I think that, you know, it, 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 will, it will want to go beyond surveys to, to using, you know, perhaps more innovative methods, but to being able to allow those people who are resistant, who are, you know, uh, who are skeptical to, 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 to be able to express what they're feeling so that you understand that that feeling's there in the community too. And it's not just what you're, you're you know, you're getting from the people who are there supporting you. Hmm. You know, so, and then- Interesting, and then, so that framework, what, where's it at now? Where are you at in we're, that process? Where I'm, I'm right at the moment of, uh, of actually. So we've, I think we've kind of gotten to this point where I've, I've just described to you, kind of. I think we have the, its conceptual structure in place, and mm -hmm. and now we need to try to figure out 
um, okay, well, what's it going to look like? And and we're we're basically the we've just finished a, a big project in the in the Caperty. So this is a KSCA has. Um, so that's pretty much finished, and we've just um, put out a, a, a series of surveys that will close that that project up. But then to just use that as kind of a um, you know as a test case yeah. scenario to kind of just you know in retrospect go back over it and go Ooh, what what are the things we could have it would have helped us to know and yeah. how do how could we have maybe found that out through the via this um you know via this uh um this framework and then yeah. and then how does this framework how can we make that framework right because what the the, the beauty of uh, this idea it, it's really very similar i think to the way science works where scientists yeah. have you know they have a methodology uh, uh, which is a, a very skeptical methodology of of interrogating the the matter that they they do. So basically, getting negative results is part of the, the whole process. Yeah. Um, with the arts, I think part of our problem is has been that well, you know, all the data we're collecting is at the end when we want to say good things to the funding body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and and there's no you know it, it it's it's very strongly weighted to to distort you know, uh, your understanding in, the, in, in, in to be optimistic. And being yeah. optimistic is actually part, I mean, you know, I, I think you can tell, being optimistic is part of my practice. Like, you yeah. know, you just go yeah. in and, and yeah, you say, we can do it, you know, this will happen, this is gonna be amazing. Wow, this is, you know, all just doing that is actually part of making art. Like if you went in there and go, oh, I don't know, I don't think this is gonna work. That's, you know, that's not- You one, wouldn't get anywhere. Art. No, you, you don't wouldn't. get very far with it. Those, so, that's what production managers are for. You bring those, those people in to do your risk management <laughs> to help say what could possibly go wrong. <laughs> Alex, I'm just going to kind of wind us because we're we're about um about eight minutes from ending. Yep. Um, so I just want to um recap. So you've got your research framework to measure impact is um is going to be the outcome of the fellowship. So will people be able to engage with that at the end of the fellowship or is there another step, do you think, after you've finished that up? Yeah, well, so both. Um, we, we, we're definitely going to uh, publish a paper about it. And so I'm hoping to to, to, to make those findings available to people. Um, yeah. I know with, with the uh, the partnership with Scotia, is uh, it's meant to be a long-term project. We put it at five years, but um, I, I reckon it'll go longer just simply because it's taking us a while to kind of to get it up and going. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, once we've made it, like I'd like to be able to, I think the next thing would be to trial it um, from a, a project that we're starting from scratch um, yeah. and see how it works and, and, then, and then begin to adapt in, from there. Yeah, so you'd apply the framework from the beginning through. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, I've got a question here. Do you want to stop sharing these beautiful photos now? Or, um, yeah, as we say, that. and I'll just see what question. We've got a question and a comment. So I'll go with the question first. Um, it's from Joe Tui in Victoria. So do you think Cementa has impacted on the way the town and community thinks or talks about itself? Good question. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I would, I would say it's de definitely yes. Um, they, you know, there was actually one of the things that was a little bit surprising is that there was this kind of one of the parts of the skepticism around the art festival was that um, the locals didn't understand why Candos like Ralston is a very picturesque little 19th century town. It's got, you know, leafy streets and, and sandstone buildings, a river runs through it. It's, it's beautiful. And they were yeah, all okay. like, yeah. we're the arty town. Why would you go to that? Yeah. And Candos had been this dirty industrial town. And, um, and I, I, I remember having moments of conversations with locals when they're asking me why and, and, and the answer is twofold. One, Candace is beautiful, but you know, like the works had just closed and, and I think it was just, you know, you grow up thinking of your town as a dirty old town. And, and I know I like the, the kids used to call Candace a hole and, you know, and, and every, uh, uh, I've certainly talked to enough people that they couldn't get out of uh, Candace quick enough when they grew up mm. coming back yeah. and going, oh, yes. wow. And, and coming back at the festival. And uh, like, I have, I have a very good friend who, Grew up in Candos, and she came back at the festival and bought. She was going to move to Mudgee, and she bought in. She bought in Ralston, uh, or between between the towns. Um, yeah. You know, because because she was like, this town is different. And the other side of it was is that 
you know, the and I think the thing, the, the contrast with Ralston is that Candos is the more interesting town for contemporary artists because it's got so many contradictions in it because mm. it's regional and it's industrial and it's working class. And it, you know, it, it, it literally looks like a, somebody, you know, airlifted a bit of the suburbs and dropped it on the side of a mountain, you know, and, and placed a big machine up, up, wow. up on top of the mountain. So, yeah. you know, it, it's a really, really unique kind of place. And that, and that was a, just a, a magnet for the artists. And, mm -hmm. and I don't think that the people of Candace understood that. And I guess the, and the, the, the- Time, but now do you think that over the eight years they've changed the way they see themselves yeah. Yeah, in yeah. relation to the festival? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. that's in, great. In, in relationship to the festival, in relationship to the town, I think that, you know, like yeah. the town is changing its shape. And so there's a better understanding of, of this as being, a, you know, a, a beautiful place to live. And, um, and that's what it is. And, yeah. um, and we, have, we have people, who are, it's interesting, uh, a lot of the, the demographic of people that are moving up here are actually working class people from the Western suburbs of Sydney who can sell right. them for a million dollars there and yeah. buy something you know, cheaper here and, and retire. And so we're getting sort of a, you know, a shift of people who you, know, you do wanna, wanna live in, a, you know, in, a, in, a, in this environment. Fantastic. Mm. Well, I think it's fantastic. I'm sure, as you say, there's lots of different opinions in every regional community. So I'm, I'm sure yeah. there's some people that re um, who um, resist change, but it's really lovely to hear that yeah. story. Yeah. I know yeah. that's and really familiar got the to me. To talk about that either. Like that's yeah. you know, it is a big part of the story, and it's not it's one we shouldn't ignore. You know. Yeah. That, well, you that... seem really willing to jump into those challenges and those challenging relationships, and I think that's really a very authentic way of practicing in regional communities. And, and it's interesting. It's that's where yeah. that's what's interesting there, especially because mm. of something that we usually turn our face from, you know, yeah. why are those people resisting? Why are they so angry? What's what's, you know, you know, maybe you can't you're, you're not going to solve their life. But but, but yeah. maybe maybe there are ways we can we can have a conversation instead of yelling at each other. Yeah. Absolutely. Alex, I've got one last question for you, which is about the future. So it's a big question, um, but we've only got three minutes for you to answer it. So we'll give it, we'll give it a go. Um, maybe a few dot points. But what does the future look like for Cementa, for the Candace, uh, sorry, Candace School of Cultural Adaptation and for you as an individual practitioner? Um, so, yeah, so because uh, I read this question when you, you gave me them before the, the, the thing and I, the, you know, what's the, what's the future for Candace? And, and it was an interesting one to ask because you know, like it's a town. It's not a. It's not a project. It's you know. Yeah. You know what I mean. I. Yeah. I, I want that town to be you know uh, vibrant, healthy, um, and 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 still the the welcoming kind of beautiful community that I that I, I I fell in love with, and that's all I can hope for. Like I don't you know I don't have anything more specific than that. Yeah. Um. The festival. It's, uh, it seems to be um, turning. It, it's an it's an interesting creature. Like this is a. Uh, you know, it's 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 a very fraught thing. I I came into this, um, you know, from a from a sort of a, a very very grassroots sort of position, and you know, as as this you know as the festival kind of grows and gets older and more mature and and uh, uh, more stable and more professionalized and all of these things, it, it it's naturally and gonna and necessarily going to change its its nature. And I and and I find that very challenging. And I don't know what that means or what it means for me or whether you know. I mean, I I hope one day I, I will I would. I'll hand, hand over the reins to somebody else and it will go on to be, you know, to, to be a whole nother thing without me. Um, yeah. You know, but, but I am actually finding that that whole space as well to be pretty interesting, like to see that happen. It's, it's part of, you know, my, my practice when, when I came out here trying to figure out, well, what is your practice in the regions? It became this kind of, well, how, you know, asking the question I wanted to ask is how do things get done? How do people do things? How do, how do, you know, how do you uh, get stuff done in a small town or a small community? Or how does the council, you know, manage, uh, uh, you know, their council area? And, uh, and I'm, I'm slowly learning this stuff by, you know, being on committees and, 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 uh, um, and, and engaging with the people that, 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 that do this sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, Alex, I could talk to you for another hour at least. <laughs> but um, we've got to wrap it up now. Um, I've just got a few comments on the chat um, that I'll read out. So um, 
One of the really important elements of Cementa is involving members of the community who aren't artists to take part in the production of art. For example, producing a community wall hanging by learning to weave with all the all invited to take part, participating in collage workshops and being a participant in the Caper Tree Weaving Water Project last year, learning to weave with natural resources from our valley. That's beautiful. So that's a comment, obviously, from someone local who's been involved. And um, there's lots of thank yous and that you're uh, bursting with passion and it's so positive to see. So that's a really nice feedback. Um, thank you so much, Alex, for joining us today in the conversation. And um, yeah, we're getting really enjoyed it and lots of thank yous. So that's great feedback for us. And um, we'll um, hide our videos now and um, we'll put up a slide that has information about um, flood information and places that a place that you can donate um, if you've got some spare coin to um, support the devastation that's happening right now across New South Wales. Okay, well, thank you.